joined by the outstanding linebacker of the San Diego State Aztecs, a preseason All-American, and that is Miles Burris. Miles, uh, welcome to Double X Ten Ninety tonight. How are you? I'm doing great, Coach. How are you doing? Ah, doing well. Boy, uh, what a wild, crazy ball game on Saturday night. You guys were down 30-13. to I felt like I was watching a doubleheader. You guys lost the first game 30-13, to and then you came back and really, I thought, played a, an outstanding second half on defense, and you outscored uh, Wyoming 14 nothing, but just couldn't quite get it over the top. Yeah, we uh ourselves in too big of a hole in that first half. It's uh, one of those things that... You know, you can never win a game unless you put four quarters together, and um, you know any any team is good enough to beat you if you don't do that. Hey, Miles, uh, they were running that spread, and you guys had some time, to, I know, to get prepared. But uh, again, you know, everything's different. You're going against different guys. They had a young quarterback back there, and boy, he uh, he certainly played well in the first half. Uh, and they jumped on you guys, but then all of a sudden, second half, uh, and maybe you could talk a little bit about the adjustments were made. I mean, uh, five three three and outs for Wyoming there in the second half. You held them to 100 yards in the second half and no points after, you know, giving up uh, 310 yards in the first half and, and four uh, touchdowns on uh, four drives in the first half. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a rough deal. On it. I mean, there wasn't really too many uh, scheme adjustments in the second half. It was just us going out there and wanting it more and, um, you know, there's no, we don't have any concrete answers as to, as to why we came out so slow in that first half or why we played so bad um i'm sure you know everybody has maybe even different reasons than other everybody else does on the team so we just have to get that shirt up and then this week in practice just prepare like the like we never had before and and, and try to redeem ourselves this week hey what did uh, what did coach long tell you guys after the game i mean you guys certainly put yourself in position uh, more than one uh, time to win that game down the stretch. Your field goal kicker, Abel Perez, had a rough night. But nonetheless, so what did Coach Long tell you guys after the game? Because th- that game hurt. Yeah, no, it, it definitely did. It was uh, the most painful game that uh, that I've had to, uh, a part of this year. And, you know, it was just one of those things that he kind of told us the obvious. You can't, you can't go out there and, and uh, play like – played terribly in the first half like we did you have to play four quarters and um you know we have to get it figured out as to why we keep outperforming ourselves in the second half as compared to the first we've it's it hasn't just been this past game it's been uh, a pattern this season where you know we come out slower and then pick it up in the second half and we can't be doing that we have to start fast and finish fast we're visiting with uh outstanding linebacker the san diego state aztecs miles burris joining us on the Corky's Hotline here on Southern California Sports Leader, Double X 1090. Miles, uh, who's the vocal leader? Are you considered the vocal guy on defense? Who Who's the guy that, you know, uh, gets everybody revved up? I mean, I can be at times, uh, you know, but most, mostly I kind of just try to, to lead by lead by example and, and by the way I play on the field. Um, the guy that, that really gets people revved up on, on defense is probably uh, J.J. Ocelli. Mm-hmm. Um uh, he he's uh, he's a really good vocal leader and really good at getting the guys hyped up and ready to play football. And um, you know we really appreciate that aspect of the game. Hey, Ronnie Hillman had an incredible ball game, over 200 yards rushing. He uh, broke the school record with a 99 yard touchdown run. What, what's it like? And I know a lot of times you're over there, you know, talking with your linebackers coach and maybe getting a cup of Gatorade and sitting on the bench a little bit. But when you are standing at the sideline, what's it like watching that guy run? Uh, it's awesome. It's always awesome to watch him strap it up and, and go play somebody else and, and, you know, score those big runs on somebody else other than our own defense in practice. Um, yeah, it's one of those things where, yeah, a lot of the times I'm on the bench and, and, you know, we might be scheming or game planning or talking about the drive, what we did wrong and, um, you know, and then all of a sudden we just hear the crowd start roaring, and I look up on the jumbotron, and Ronnie's screaming down the sideline, and uh, you know that feels that feels great just to know that we're getting points on the board. But and at the same time, I'm never I'm never surprised by it, but I'm always I'm always happy about it. Hey, Miles, well, let me ask you this, and I don't want to pry into your personal life at all, but everyone deals with a loss a different way, and you know I've always I know when I was coaching, even when I was playing. Uh, in high school and college, I used to always talk about the, the midnight rule. You know, you can, uh, grouse and complain and bitch and moan about losing, but come midnight, you gotta turn the page and you gotta get ready for the next game. Like after that game on Saturday night, 
I mean, uh, do you stay in the locker room a little bit longer? Uh, you probably got friends and family and that the, the want to meet with you. How, how do you go about getting on with your night after a game like that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough. It definitely was tough. I mean, I, I was uh, I was pretty emotional after the game, after the loss. It, it really hurt. And, um, you know, my family kind of understood that, too. And, I mean, part of it is you, you want to put a face on for them because they came all the way out to see you play. But at the same time, you know, they love you and understand that, you know, you put so much into this game and, uh, you know, you're pretty upset about it. And they, but, um, you know, yeah, it's just one of those things where I, I try to – I try to have a short memory and in football you have to have a short memory because you got another game coming up and those guys don't feel bad for you at all. Um, but you know, for me, it was just, uh, it, it was, it's, it's hard. It's hard. To, it's pretty hard to try to shake the emotion of the loss and, and you, you know, you can, you feel like it's, you're over it and then it just creeps back into your mind and, and you try to got to try to shake it. It's really, um, uh, something you have to train your mind to try to get over. And uh, this one was a little tougher than most. Hey, let me ask you this. Uh, doing media stuff, whether you're on with me or, or talking to the, the guys that cover the Aztecs on a regular basis, going to the media room after the game, do you enjoy that or is it kind of a pain for you? Um, I, I guess I don't I don't mind it after a win. But uh, <laughs> after, <laughs> after, after a loss, I, I, I don't really enjoy it too much, the, the, after the post-game one. Anyways, I, I don't really enjoy it too much after a loss. I don't like having to keep bringing my mind back uh, to thinking about it, and uh, it's a rough deal. Yeah, I, I certainly understand that. Miles Burris, the outstanding uh, All-American candidate with the San Diego State Aztecs, joining us on the Corky's Hotline here on San Diego Sports Leader, Double X 1090. Well, you guys were off yesterday. You're back at it today. What can you tell me about New Mexico? I know they have not won a game. It's a, a game you guys ought to go in there and take care of business from the opening kickoff until the final gun. But we know that you still have to play the football game. What do you know about these guys? I uh, watched some film on them, and uh, they're actually a lot better than the record shows. Uh, they, they've they got a lot of good skill players on their team, and they've got a lot of playmaking ability. And you can see that when you watch them. It's just you know they're they're running the ball well, and then you know they 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 have a big play, whether it's a big catch or a, you know a good run, um, and they they definitely have a lot of talent on the offense. From what I've seen, because I only watch the offenses, uh, they they can they can move the ball around a little bit. It just their problem has been maybe finishing drives or, or maybe turnovers and this that and the other. But they're definitely um, a team that you you can't come in half stepping on because they will beat you. They're Division One athletes, just like anybody else. And uh, they practice just like everybody else, and live just like everybody else, and watch film. Uh, so you, you, I mean, no matter who you're playing in, in New Mexico this week, you, you gotta you gotta prepare the best that you can, and work your tail off throughout practice, and, and go ready uh, like you're playing the national championship every game. You really do. Hey Miles, uh, you know when you came in, you know I'm sure you watched uh, film in high school, but but now in college, I mean guys can watch film and they can watch film all they want, but they got to wa- know what they're watching. How long did it take you to really be able to take a look at film and really break it down to where you could go out and use it on the practice field and use it in game action? I think it's one of those things where I'm still kind of in a learning process. Uh, you pick up on on new things uh, the more film you watch and the more film you watch with your coaches and, and other peers and teammates uh, that you you know you look for more specific things when you're watching it now and, and it's not really you know the the quantity of film you watch you watch every single game three times it's not about that it's it's the quality of it and, and trying to find uh, certain signals maybe it's even a guy's stance that can give away a pass or, or something like that you gotta. Uh, you got to look for things that are they're going to directly help you and correspond to what you're going to see on the field. How's school going right now for you? Uh, it's not too bad. I'm in one class, and that's a once a week deal, and uh, <laughs> not, not not too uh, not. Well, let me ask you this: You got the one class once a week. You got to go to practice. I mean, what do you do with some of your uh, you know free time? I'm watching film. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, no, yeah, I, I mean, I I wanted to take one class. I set it up that way so, you know, out so that I could have more time during my senior season to just really focus on football, and that's what I've done. I'm, I'm not really necessarily um, sleeping in any later. I, I pretty much have the same hours, but, you know, 
that my time is going towards more football things, yeah, preparing my body, maybe getting some extra lifts or uh, extra treatment time to, to make sure that I'm healthy uh, and getting up there and, and watching film and, and preparing for my opponent. So once the season's over and you graduate in December, come uh, January, you can just focus on, you know, getting ready for the combine and a career in the NFL. Yeah, God willing, if I can uh, stay healthy and, and play well enough uh, for somebody to give me a shot, that'd be great. Uh, that's great stuff. Hey, Miles, good luck on Saturday night against New Mexico. And uh, one of these Tuesday nights, we're going to get you to come over here and we'll take some phone calls with the Aztec fans. Sounds good. Take care, Miles. Good luck. All right, thank you. Thanks for having me.